This is I from London. We're here at the premiere of Casuals at the Roxy here. With me I've got uh, Cash Pennant and Nonzo and Nonzier. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Right, Cash, great turnout. Um, what did you make of it? I'm absolutely overwhelmed, yeah. Um, the quality of people here was excellent. It's all invited people, so everyone was special is here. And to say that David D arrived this morning and to get a reaction. Um, from real people, that's all I wanted. And to get a public reaction when you're locked away for a year and you're close, too close to a subject, it's really important, you know. It's um, just to get that first reaction and know, yeah, I've achieved something, yeah. And I, I know now tonight from the people's reaction and, and the people that's here that, I, that I've got something here um, that I can go on with and hopefully get it out there to the wider public. Nonzo, your, uh, your reaction to casuals? Oh, it was amazing, it was amazing. It was really, I've got to say, Cass, well done, man. That was a freaking amazing job. Because, like, for me, obviously, doing the film, Cass, was one thing, learning about Cass and his history and his life, but to actually see the documentary that covers the fashion and the, the fashion culture that surrounded that time period and even is in influencing all the fashion that is going on today is an amazing Amazing thing. I could see that on prime time in any of the network channels or anywhere. And I hope it does come out like on Channel 4 or BBC or somewhere because it's just, it's perfect. It's absolutely one of the things that I think a lot of people have been, I think that kind of era and the, thing that, the things that have affected British culture, like fashion, that are really important, have been neglected in a certain way. And, and it, it had such a, a massive voice and a part to play within our culture that... Um, this documentary has bridged such a gap in like an hour and an hour and fifteen minutes. It's done that. It's just done. It's amazing. It's amazing. What, Nonzo, what were some of your influences uh, in, the, in the stuff you wore growing up? You was born in the late 70s, so it would have been sort of uh, early 90s and late 80s for you, wouldn't it? To be honest with you, I grew up quite poor, so I didn't really have time. I didn't really have labels or anything like that when I was growing up. When I, when I got to an age where I started working for myself, I started getting into Nike and wearing, you know, we had a few, uh, wore a little bit of a lessy, um, mainly Nike and Adidas and... But for me, growing up, I didn't really have money to buy that kind of stuff. You know, like they say, a shirt was like 70 quid. Yeah. I had a, I don't know, I got a bad 10 pound pair of trainers where you could buy a pair of trainers for 10 pound. Do you know what I mean? Still do the same job. <laughs> you know, I was never really, I was never really influenced too much by fashion, but I really got into my more Nikes trainers when it, when it was more like, like when they had the, the, those Puma pumps. You know the um and the Reebok pumps. Reebok pumps, yeah, Reebok pumps, and then uh, Puma disc. The yeah. Pumas had the disc. That's when I started buying my own trainers. Air Jordans. I, yeah, that's when about when I had my own kind of stuff to buy. But um, yeah, it's definitely people around me. Uh, you know, growing up, you kind of fit in with a certain crowd. If you had certain clothes, the certain people you hang around with. If you wore this, you hung around with those people. And it was definitely something that I saw around me growing up and it's great to see a documentary that really covers that I mean Cash personally growing up myself I just wore what my mum put on me back to be honest till I was about 14 or 15 but this documentary is more than just about the brands and there's a lot of talk in this about Adidas and all these various brands but it's more than that isn't it it's about a, a, like a, a belonging isn't it in, a, in groups yeah I mean it's the, the social story behind it comes out clear you know the working class, you know, dress smart to hot, you know, for their pride and their appearances. It, it come out, it come out loud and clear. The social issues behind it. It meant different things to different people, you know. Um, some people it meant fitting in. Other people it meant we're as good as you. Um, just meant something. And the other thing that's important to me, I think, people now know about the eighties casual and the tennis gear and all that. But how does it relate to a day? And seeing it in the kids today, I think we we've, we've showed. It's not just the legacy that is actually evolving and recycling a day. So the film was just as important to the guys that lived it, which will all be sort of 40 to 50 now, yeah? But their sons and all that coming down, a day's 20-year-old can relate to that film because it comes full circle. And fashion's always 
does that, don't it? It always kind of repeats itself, you know? I think Nons, what Nonzo said is basically how we saw the film and why I pursued it, yeah? Because it's a film about all of us, you know, at some stage. You know, we're all, we're all into clothes and cultures and different things. But also, there's another story there about independent filmmaking, yeah? Because anyone knows, you know, no film background for making a film, you know, I'm known as the book person, you know, so there's it's, it's another story there in making casuals, right, of, there's never been a better time that if you believe in a project, yeah, and you really believe in it, it's not been a better time than to make your own movies, yeah, and, and um, I think casuals at the moment straight to DVD shows that, you've seen the reaction that it was not the wrong thing to do, you know. So I, I do hope it, we can take it further. Now we've got the product here and people can see exactly what we've got. Um, and this, this is why I'm kind of... Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of buzzing and going to really think, sit down carefully tomorrow and think, how can I maximise the potential in this movie? Do you, do you think um, the kids of today are sort of under pressure to keep up with the latest fashions um, without without really knowing a lot about the history of what they're wearing, they're more, because their friends and their peers all wear the same things, all these designer labels, are they under some sort of pressure? It's, it's extremely difficult to be original. The whole thing about fashion was not having money to buy the thing, it's all about a fashion stylist. It's the way he wore it. So you could have the same jacket, it wouldn't look the same on you the way he wore it. What made you go out and buy it anyway, because that looked cool. You know, fashion, fashion stylists were really, really connoisseurs. That inspired everyone else in the copy came. But it wasn't all about having a credit card and me and I just to have the money and saying I can have that next day. So when I've originally set this out, I, I believe the casual culture was the last ever working class fashion subculture. I've not seen anything since the 80s casuals, because the simple reason is what I said. The original is gone. Yeah, the credit card and the internet, you can have anything tomorrow. And the whole story here was every item of clothing they wore, there's a story behind it. You know, whether it's poor and never had nothing for years and years, and their first wages went out and bought what they wanted to buy, not what their parents dressed them, you know? Or the venture how they went across Europe to get that item of clothing, you know? So you wouldn't bother a day, you just get a credit card. Why go to Europe to nick or spend all your money, money on a pair of trainers you can just get everything tomorrow so it's very hard for fashion today to follow through and i originally titled it the last working class fashion subculture but lo and behold when we discovered the casual mods in brighton and worthing and found them in london and the north east all right i forever missed miss this generation yeah and they're all under 17 so they're not in pubs they're under the radar yeah and they're dressing their gun and the difference is they're not just buying it they're experimenting that's the key right people experiment they tried their own ideas the suit the mod it come this way and like the guy said they tried the buttons they chopped the collars they done different things the casuals frayed the jeans you know all that kind of experimenting is just as important just the same as the hairstyles you know you know you might look at a catalog and say this eye style but you go in and start want this want to change a few things and someone else likes that and that experiment had gone with the internet culture and the easy quick fix. There's, there's the men's magazines, that's how they look like, that's how they buy their clothes, and they dress exactly how they see it in the shop front and in the catalogue. So they all look like clones. But all of a sudden there's a new generation come through that's got what the old generation had, and they're saying what's interesting is all the cultures before that I knew they, they want to get as far away from their parents' fashion as possible, yeah? But the day's generation is saying they're actually inspired by their parents, all right? They're interested in music and clothes. And I think this is where this new culture's coming through. So I had to retard it, the legendary deterrence fashion, because it was no longer true as the worst clock, the last working class subculture. There's a new generation coming through. They've got all the characteristics of the old generation. In fact, they're experimenting trying different things and got their own style and like I said in the film got their own twist to it you know um, and I feel it's very important because it makes the documentary made not just an untold story but very relevant to today
All right, well, guys, thank you very much for talking to uh, I from London Cast. It's a fantastic documentary uh, film. It's a uh, right insight. You know, I think you've, you're quite brave in what you've done. You've sort of taken something that's out of the norm and and turned it into this. It's it's, it's a great it's great viewing. And uh, you, Nonzo, you've obviously you sh shot to fame after playing Cass in his film. Uh, can you tell us just quickly what you're up to now? Well, um, Cass has done really great stuff for me. I'm just finished doing something called The Grey with Liam Neeson. That'll be out in January here in America. And I've just been in the middle of shooting something called Game of Thrones, which is a HBO TV series, which has already had a series in America, and it's gone like to number one on HBO's list. And we're going to go to season two, and it's going to be even better. That's kind of like Lord of the Rings, but a TV series. It's kind of set with swords and sandals. It's amazing. Conan the Barbarian will be out on DVD on uh, uh, December 12th um, here. And it came out already in America, but, that, but it's going well. I can't complain, really. It's going really well. All right, guys, not often I get overshadowed in height, but you two have outdone me today, you know what I mean? But um, listen, thank you very much for talking to us, and uh, good luck with everything. Catch you, and you know, your film career is absolutely buzzing, so well done. I've just seen, for, seen the three Cassies, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've just got to point out, do you know people actually miss sometimes, it's usually on Facebook, they think that I'm him. Like, they'll just, like, Coogan Cassius, and they'll just... Like they'll they'll message me saying, "Oh, great film." Do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, when I was single, I'd reply to them and say, "Yeah, no problem." But now I can't do that sort of thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> can't get let messages, see messages like that. <laughs> no, no, no. Right, all right, guys. Thank you very much. This is Coogan Cassius, Fire from London. Thank you very much.